Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen wa al-jannatu lil-muwahideen wa la udwana illa ala al-zalimeen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-khalq wa al-mursaneen. Sayyidina wa Nabiyina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We welcome our brothers and sisters once again to this new episode of this podcast series. And we looking at advices and uh, recommendations and discussions that would be of benefit to you and I, uh, young Muslims living in the West and facing the challenges within a Western society. And uh, uh, the chapter that we're looking at today, and we're reading the Al-Fawaid Al-Mukhtara, uh, selected beneficial anecdotes for the wayfarer, the one traveling the path to Akhirah by Habib Zain bin Ibrahim bin Sumayt. And the discussion that he reached speaks about books and the place of books with a in the life of a believer or the life of a student of knowledge, a student of deen. And uh, even though this may not necessarily have direct bearing upon challenges within the West, I felt that it would be great for us to listen to some of the names of these books and what are the books that we should be aiming and intending to study. And may Allah make it possible for us to study the various books that will be mentioned today. But it also gives you an eye and insight into the lives of the great men of the Valley of Hadramaut and their attachment to works and to books and to reading. And uh, perhaps that's where you and I can benefit, benefit in the West. One of the things that we've become so negligent of is reading. Uh, we, we, we're living in societies and communities where our young are almost uh, completely negligent of picking up a book and a reading and perhaps through this podcast and through the lessons of these great men we can actually develop a desire to start reading and receive some guidance of what is being shared here. Uh, the first uh, quotation presented by uh, Habib Zain in this work of his is from Al-Imam Al-Aydarus, Sayyidina Al-Imam Al-Aydarus bin Umar Al-Habshi and uh, Imam Aydarus bin Umar al-Habshi, may Allah be pleased with him. And he said that the primary six works in Tasawwuf that should be studied are uh, the, the, the six works are uh, the Ihya Ulum al of Imam al-Ghazali, the Minhaj al-Abidin, also of Imam al-Ghazali, the Arba'in al-Asl, also of Imam al-Ghazali, the Risala al-Kushayri of Imam al-Kushayri, the Awarif al-Ma'arif of Imam al-Suhrawardi, and the Qut al-Qulub of Abu Talib al-Makki. These are the foundational six works. And uh, I think what's perhaps important to comment over here is that uh, many a times uh, in the Western circles, especially the circles of academia, people imagine themselves, or students of knowledge, imagine themselves to be equipped to delve and to start studying and reading any text. And that's very inaccurate and very incorrect. And sometimes, uh, it's many a times the reason why the scholars are so often misunderstood. And it's very important that one follows a sequence when studying the various works of the ulama and the scholars. Uh, by way of example, we're going to be speaking about a number of fiqh texts, especially that in the Shafi'i school, because the scholars of Hadramaut, they were predominantly followers of the Shafi'i madhab. Uh, however, there is generally a... A, 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 an order in which a person should be studying the various sciences. So in Shafi'i Fiqh, they would usually say a person should start with the Risad al-Jamia of Habib Ahmad bin Zain al-Habji. And similarly, they would say, therefore, after one may study the uh, Safina to Naja, and from the, the Safina to Naja, one should study the Muhtasar al-Latif of Ba Fadl. And from the Muhtasar al-Latif, one studies Ba Fadl's bigger work, al muqaddima al hadrumiyya and from the Muqaddimah al-Hadrumiya, one should study the uh, Muqtasar of Abi Shuja. And from the Muqtasar of Abi Shuja, one could then either move on to the Zubad, or one may move on to Umda to Salik. And from Umda to Salik, eventually, 
uh, one may read the Minhaj Talibin of Imam al Nawawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and that's this type of sequence moving from a smaller text to a bigger text, one after the other, each text detailing the fiqh of the madhab in more detail. That type of sequence is very important. And uh, my advice to our brothers and sisters and students of knowledge is that don't try to, uh, don't try to jump the line. Um, uh, one of the sayings among the scholars regarding uh, people that jump the line as such, people that consider themselves to be scholars before the time, it's often used, they said that, tazabbaba qabla ayyata khasram. They make reference to such students of knowledge that they've become raisins before being grapes, right? So, uh, of course, a raisin needs to be a grape before it becomes a raisin because a raisin is a dried out grape. And here you have individuals, they're becoming raisins and they were not yet, they were not yet grapes, never mind uh, becoming raisins. You know, so the sequence of the books is very important. I've seen in my lifetime many a student jumping to major texts and major works and reading material that is really beyond his or her scope, uh, imagining that they people of knowledge, imagining that they're understanding the work, but deep down, just based on basic discussions and simple questions, uh, they are completely in the dark and they don't really understand the subject that they are studying. Now, and that is, uh, uh, mashallah, a very important point that uh, through that particular quotation, we were able to convey, keep it in mind, uh, if you're looking for a detailed exposition on the sequence of texts and how they should be read in the various fields and the various madahib, then our teacher said Habib Umar has a very valuable work called Maqasid Halaqat al Ta'lim that our institute Darut Turat al Islami has published into the English language, the translation of our good brother and friend Ustad Amjad Tarsin Tarsin. Uh, and you may find that online and acquire copies to understand the sequence of books, how they should be studied in our path of acquisition, acquiring knowledge and becoming students of deen and readers. Now, uh, so I want to move on to some of the quotations in the book that we are uh, browsing through. Um, Imam Abdullah bin Alab al-Haddadi used to say that reading the Minhaj al-Talibin of Imam Nawawi in Fiqh and the Ihya al din in Tasawuf and the Tasir of Imam Baghawi in Tasir and the Mulhat al-I'Arab in the Science of Lugha and the books of Ibn Hisham uh, these are books that uh, through it the individual receives great openings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the soul elevates closer to its Lord. تَتَرَقَّى بِهَا الرُّوحِ Naam, and uh, these are very important books and we should ask ourselves that uh, whom of us are truly studying the Minhaj of Nawawi and if I did it once, was it only once? And if I haven't reached that level of studying, when am I going to reach that level of studying? The Ihya al-Umid-Din. The Ihya al din in order for me to truly appreciate and study the Ihya, have I read books such as the Bidayat al-Hidayah of Ghazali, the beginning of guidance? Have I studied the Minhaj al-Abidin, uh, which would translate as the methodology of the worshippers of Allah? Have I studied the Risalat al muawan the book of assistance of Imam al-Haddad? Have I read through texts such as the Al-Wasaya uh, Al-Nafi'ah, beneficial councils, right? Never mind reaching the study of the Ihya al din right? By studying the Minhaj and studying the Ihya and Tafsir of Imam Baghawi and the Mulhat al-Arab, these are books, the books, Sira books of Ibn Isham. Through it, Imam Haddad said, you will attain great openings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your soul will elevate closer to Allah. Uh, uh, Abdul Rahman al saqaf Sheikh Abdul Rahman al saqaf who of course was the, the Qutb of his time. No. Sheikh Abdul Rahman al saqaf um, his state was amazing with Allah. And his sons were all from the awliya of Allah. Such that it was said that the, uh, the most junior of the sons of Sheikh Abdul Rahman al saqaf held the state of Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, multiple times the state of Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, it was said about the children of Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Saqqar. And he himself used to complete eight khatams of the Quran in every 24 hour cycle, 24, four during the day and four during the evening. And his eldest son, Habib Umar al Mahdar, was also the Qutb of his time. And similarly, his uh, other son, Abu Bakr al Saqqaran, was the father of Imam al Aydarus. Subhanallah, he said that showing that these were men of tasawwuf, men of piety, 
but the attachment to reading books and how important reading and studying was to them. He said that whoever does not read the Muhaddab of Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi, he does not understand the Qawaid, the maxims of the Madhab. And whoever does not read the Tanbih, also Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi, فَلَيْسَ بِنَبِي He is not informed, or he is not a person of knowledge. And whoever does not study, he said, مَلَمْ يُطَالِعُ الْإِحْيَاءَ فَمَا فِيهِ حَيَاء Whoever doesn't study the Ihya al-Muddin, he does not truly have modesty and the qualities of the people of modesty. And he said, وَمَنْ لَا لَهُ ورد فهو كرد. And the one who does not have a weird, a daily practice of adhkar or dhikr or recitation of the Qur'an, فهو كرد. He is like a, like a monkey. Now, subhanAllah. Other books that our Salaf, Pious uh, predecessors, encourage us to uh, read were the books of, uh, they were four muqaddimat that they emphasized, introductions that, to various books that one should read on account of the amount of knowledge that they held. So they spoke about the muqaddimah of the tasir of Fakhruddin al-Razi up until Surah al-Baqarah. And they spoke of the muqaddimah of Shara Sahih Muslim by Imam Nawawi, which is extremely beneficial. And similarly, the muqaddimah of the Majmu, which is the commentary on the muhaddab of Ishaq al-Shirazi and the muqaddimah of Ibn Khaldun. And uh, they encourage one to read the book Shifa of Qadi Iyad, which has been translated into the English language. I think Turat Publications translated the Shifa of Qadi Iyad into English. And the reading of this book alone, never mind benefiting from his knowledge, reading the book has been tried and tested to remove difficulties. Through it, Allah removes difficulties. So Habib Ahmad bin Hussain al Aydarus, uh, he got married to the daughter of Shaykh Abdul Rahman, Shaykh Abdul Sheikh the daughter of his uncle Sheikh bin Abdullah and the evening of their marriage Laylatul Zifaf uh, he said to his wife hold on to the lamp and let me read to you the the khutbah and you could call that the introduction of the book of Shifa of Qadiyah so when he completed the introduction, he then said to her, perhaps it's best that I continue reading the book of Shifa because this is a beautiful way for us to start up our marriage. And then he continued reading from the Shifa of Qadi Iyad while his newly wed wedded wife was holding the lamp in her hand until both of them entered mourning for the prayer of Salat al-Fajr. And thus their first night together was just the reading of the Shifa of, of Qadi Iyad. SubhanAllah. Look at the, these great men that we so often praise for the taqwa and piety and relationship with Allah. Look at the attachment to, to books and to reading. SubhanAllah. And uh, um, uh, Imam al-Haddad, despite the many books that would be read to him, there are three books. Whenever one completed a reading of it, they would restart another reading. And one of them was the Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam Nawawi. The other was Maqal al-Nasihin and the other Sharh al-Hadiqa. Uh, a commentary on the Urwat al-Wathiqa of Sheikh Muhammad bin Umar Bahra. Uh, Riyadh al-Salihin is a hadith book that so many students skip. So many students, they feel that the Riyadh al-Salihin is a book for the, the beginner. And thus they skip it and uh, want to start reading the six canonical works. Tirmidhi, Abu Dawud, Nasai, Ibn Majah, Bukhari and Muslim. And they're ignoring a book of Imam Nawawi titled Riyadh al-Sadihin, which of course has been translated into English, The Gardens of the Pious. And uh, our, our Salaf of the Sada al-Ba'alawi, they were very particular about the Riyadh al-Sadihin and they spoke about the benefits and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants one many openings through the reading of the Riyadh al-Sadihin. So they spoke about uh, the experiences in reading and the importance of certain books and many narrations and uh, um, what I'd like to do is, since I touched on the, the Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam Nawawi, uh, I want to speak about the books of Imam Nawawi. And uh, many, one of the people of Kashf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted uh, the, the heart, granted them vision of heart such that they were able to see not only with the physical eye, but they were able to see with their heart. Uh, he visited a scholar, one of these great saints, visited a scholar one day and his library was beautifully uh, displayed in front of him. So he said, why is it that I see some of these books shining with light, with nur, much more than the other books? 
So the scholar said to him, please stand up and remove all those books that are shining with a bright light. So I can see what books are shining more than others. So he stood up and he began gathering the books that had a, a bright light attached to it. And when he placed it down in front of the scholar and he went through these books, he found that all of them were the books of Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. And he of course was the Qutb of his time as well. Uh, one of the students in my Friday evenings prior to the Salah of Maghrib, we have a gathering called the Sa'a Fatimiyyah, where a group of students would read books and would comment on them and complete the, the day of Jumu'ah with the Salawat, the Friday Salawat that is mentioned within the Khulasa of our teacher, Sayyid Habib Umar. And one of the sisters asked, what is the meaning of the Qutb? And the Qutb, first of all, is something that is made reference to within the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, even though some have questioned its authenticity, but reference has been made to it, number one. Number two, the Qutb, which translates as a pole or an axle around which everything revolves, is one of the highest stations of sainthood that a person is able to achieve. However, while many may attain the status of reaching the level of Qutbiyya, it doesn't necessarily mean he is the Qutb, because the Qutb can only be one wali, which would be the most senior wali of all the awliya living in the world. And that's a basic explanation. There is more detail to that, of course. And Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, by agreement of the saints, was the Qutb of his time. And therefore, his works were so, so valuable. Now, uh, Habib Ahmad bin Hassan al Atas, who lived in Makkah al Makarrama, he said, When I seek knowledge from Sayyid Ahmad al Dahlan, he said to me, uh, I'll give you one benefit. He said, Ibn Hajar al Haytami, who's uh, the author of the famous Tuhfa and a source of fatwa in the Shafi Madhab, he said, He memorized the Minhaj of Nawawi. While Sheikh al Ramli, this is an all proper possibility. Shamsuddin wrote the Nihaya. He memorized the Bahja. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the works of Ibn Hajar and recorded benefit from the works of Ibn Hajar more than that of Ramli. And the secret behind that was the fact that he memorized the Minhaj of Imam al Nawawi. And that's through the memorization of a book of Imam Nawawi. Allah blessed his writings and his works such that uh, the benef benefit of his work spread throughout the world. Uh, Another individual whose works requires our attention is the books of Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad. And I know I don't have much time, but I feel it's very important to mention some of this. Uh, his book, an nasai al diniyya uh, which has been translated into English, and the title doesn't come to me right now. Um, Religious Councils, that would be the translation of the book. I'm not sure if the English translation is published with that title. In it, he collated and gathered whatever is to be mentioned in the Ihya wa din of Ghazali. So in a short version, you could cover whatever Ghazali mentioned in a four volume plus book. Now, um, um, Sheikh, um, uh, some of the scholars mentioned, Habib Alawi bin Shahab, he said, uh, and this is a, a uh, those who believe, believe, and those who don't believe, they don't need to believe. But Habib Alawi bin Shahab, one of the great awliya, the uh, sheikh of the sheikh of our teacher, said Habib Umar, uh, he said that the Sahih al-Bukhari is not recited, say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is present. No. And the presence of Rasul sallallahu holds different meanings, and I don't want to delve into it. But generally, it would be a presence of his, of his soul. And similarly, he said, and neither is the words or the books of Habib Abdullah al-Haddad read, save that he, sallallahu alayhi wa is present. No. And some of the senior scholars, Habib Alaw ibn Shihab also transmitted, some of the senior scholars, they said that had Imam Khazali been alive today, and he was to write his Ihya Ulum al din then he would have quoted extensively from the books of Habib Abdullah bin Al Imam Al Haddad, Abdullah bin Al Al Haddad, Imam Al Haddad. Subhanallah. And uh, like this, this particular podcast, even though um, uh, we're just speaking about books and it's may, some of you may relate and some of you may not relate, the point is that attach yourself to the books of the Salaf, of our pious predecessors. For in their books there is a barakah, there is blessing, there is knowledge, there is openings for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
uh, of course one of the main texts that you may have heard us mentioning is that of Imam Khazali, the Ihya Alumidin of Imam Al Khazali. And many of our scholars they state that the one who acts upon the Riz Ihya and acts upon it will be from the people of Jannah. And the 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 Salaf or Salaf from the Salaf al Ba'alawi, the attachment to the Ihya Alumidin. And this is what makes them so unique uh, was the attachment to reading and practicing upon the Ihya, such that Imam Haddad's own son, Habib Hassan, uh, he read the Ihya Ulum al-Din no less than 70 times. Uh, the Shaykh of Sayyid Habib Umar, Habib Abdul Qadir, Ahmad al-Saqaf, prior to reaching the age of 20, I think it was, he completed 27 readings of the Ihya Ulum al-Din. No. So may Allah grant us attachment to the books. The books of these individuals, it's like you're sitting with, sitting in front of them and benefiting directly from them. So their books, it's as if they are alive within our homes when we have their, homes in, their books in our homes. And when we read their books, it's like we're taking from them and connecting to them, to them and receiving from their secrets and their barakah and their blessings. And therefore, it's so important to be particular what you read. For you may read the books of people of misguidance and the people of darkness and thus be touched by their misguidance and touched by their darkness. Be very particular before studying a text to discuss it with a teacher with a person of knowledge that you have faith and trust in. We pray that Allah grants you and I a bond to the to books and to reading and to these great men and to these great scholars. And uh, this will undoubtedly be an amazing opportunity. It will undoubtedly be an amazing avenue for you and I to insulate ourselves in the trials and tribulations of Western societies and communities by seeking light and guidance through the works of these great men, spending our time reading their words, reading the paragraphs, reading the letters, and thus receiving from the barakah and lessons, lessons and knowledge in ways that you and I cannot imagine. May Allah make us from them. بهذه النوايا وبمعنى وسلف الصالح وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.